This is LXPN TV and I'm Colin O'Keefe. Health and Human Services recently levied a $100,000 fine against Phoenix Cardiac Surgery PC, a two-physician practice for a series of alleged HIPAA violations, a, pun a punishment that's really drawn the interest of, of many authors on LXPN. To explain the case and why it's, it's somewhat out of line for, with other HHS punishments, we bring in Bill Maruca of Fox Rothschild and the HIPAA, High Tech, and HIT blog. Bill, starting off, what's the, the backstory here? How did this physician group get on the Fed's radar, and, and just how bad were the infractions? Well, thanks, Colin. Uh, my understanding is what happened was it was discovered that the physician group had been using an electronic scheduling system, which was web-based, but unprotected. So patient appointments were being posted to a website which was publicly accessible for some period of time. Uh, that was reported to HHS, who then investigated and, decided, and discovered in, in uh, the course of their investigation just how uh, thoroughly out of compliance this particular practice group was with uh, HIPAA security and privacy rules. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, the, main po the, the reason that this has drawn so much attention is because it's somewhat unique um, in terms of, uh, of the punishment and the practice that they're going after. You know, why is this fine so unusual or out of character for Health and Human Services? Well, so far, although there have been many circumstances where violations and breaches of HIPAA have been posted on the HHS uh, so-called Wall of Shame website that involve physician practices, uh, this is uh, the first time they've levied fines against uh, anyone other than a large institutional player, such as a hospital or an insurance company. Um, and I think uh, my personal opinion is they may have selected this case because of the severe nature of the violations. They had not just had these uh, documents posted online, uh, over a thousand instances of, of PHI being posted online, but uh, when, when the investigation continued, it was revealed that they had very uh, few of the appropriate uh, policies and safeguards and procedures in place that they've been required to have for 10 years or more since HIPAA first came on board. Mm -hmm. And and lastly, you know, do you see these being more common going forward? You know, are there actions small practices should take right now, or is it really more like? And this is a, an odd analogy, like music downloading, where you have, you know, people, the the feds going after people really as just a warning shot and to try to scare off everyone else to make their practices in line. But do you see this being more common, or is it more just the warning shot to 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 let everyone know, hey, this can happen to you too? I think it is clearly a warning, and I think uh, it may have been intended as a, as a warning to show that no one is too small to be under the radar and no one uh, can assume that they are uh, not going to be held accountable. Um, but uh, I don't know if the, if the music downloading uh, analogy quite holds uh, true because those have been rare cases with uh, fairly outrageous uh, dollar amounts involved and, and really no harm other than I suppose uh, you know the, the music industry wants to put a stop to something that they see as being uh, very damaging to their financial bottom line. Uh, here there were a lot of individuals whose health information was made available. There's no indication that anyone was harmed or there was any identity theft after further disclosure, but uh, people were put at risk. Um, I think that the enforcement people uh, are trying to send a message that they are going to hold everyone accountable to uh, uh, meet the requirements of HIPAA. Everyone who qualifies as a covered entity, regardless of their size or their resources, uh, they can't just ignore it. And uh, although I haven't seen all the facts uh, in this case, the allegations are that this organization uh, was pretty uh, much irresponsible when it came to the uh, adoption of an implementation of uh, HIPAA standards, uh, policy, procedures, training, and particularly uh, security safeguards. Yeah, it seemed to be very, very thorough in their uh, lack of uh, consideration for their patients' personal health information. So, I mean, the fine was certainly warranted there, it seemed. Now, it seems from the timeline that they referenced that, th that this may have been corrected a couple of years ago because it does say that, uh, describe uh, the violations uh, ending in a certain period of time, and I think uh, that, that may indicate that there's been some dialogue going on with the government uh, over time. I think only the uh, individual parties involved would know the details, but it sounds like uh, not only was a fine in, in, imposed, but there uh, is going to be a fair amount of uh, uh, oversight and uh, coordination of cleaning up uh, the compliance problems that this group has. Um, considering uh, what I've, I've seen reported from time to time about the costs uh, incurred by large organizations, insurance companies, health systems, etc., 
for remedying uh, HIPAA breaches, particularly to the extent that they've imp they've uh, Im imposed credit reporting and monitoring, uh, and offered that to the individual so far. Uh, I think uh, that that although it looks like a big number and a shocking number, uh, it's probably not disproportionate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's very interesting, and I think it's going to be interesting to watch. It seems more like a a warning shot than the start of a crusade or anything like that. But it's going to be interesting to watch going forward. I think it'll be interesting in, in to see if there's another similar uh, case that comes down that may not be quite as egregious uh, that involves a, a small player or a physician practice. Yep, exactly. Well, once again, that was Bill Maruka of Fox Rothschild and the HIPAA, High Tech, and HIT blog. For more information on this case, be sure to check out their publication. And, of course, we have a number of posts coming across LXBN on this, so be sure to check us out at lxbn.lexblog.com. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Colin.